15. The Law of Diverse Kinds In several texts, Scripture sets forth laws with respect to the mingling of diverse kinds. The word kinds here is that of Genesis chapter 1, verses 11, 12, 24, and 25, and it means a portion or species. The main texts are, Ye shall keep my statutes, Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with a mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 19 Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds, lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Thou shalt not plough with an ox and an ass together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts, as of woolen and linen together. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verses 9 to 11. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18. Paul's words make a general application of these laws to human relations. They do not thereby eliminate the agriculture and daily dress code application of the texts, but rather extend their relevance. Moses Maimonides, in his study of agricultural laws in the Bible, discussed in detail the five kinds of commandments set forth in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 19 and Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 9 to 11. These are as follows. 1. Not to sow diverse kinds of seeds, as it is said, Thou shalt not sow thy field with diverse seed. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 19. 2. Not to sow grain or vegetables in a vineyard, as it is said, Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 9. 3. Not to cross-breed cattle, one species with another, as it is said, Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19. Not to do work with beasts of two species joined together, as it is said, Thou shalt not plough with an ox and an ass together. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 10. 5. Not to wear garments of wool and linen mixed, such as idolatrous priests wear, as it is said, Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 11. It is an ironic fact that these verses, neglected by Christians, have in very recent years gained the notice of non-Christians. Mingled materials, as in the new synthetics, commonly start and cause allergic reactions. One writer has said that, in the years ahead, synthetic materials may be labelled, Warning, this garment may be hazardous to your health. Sowing vegetable or other like seeds in a vineyard can damage the vines, and planting various grains or vegetables too close together can be harmful to at least the production of good seed. To cross-breed cattle and other animals to a diverse kind can produce, when the kinds are somewhat close, some results, but sterile ones. Thus, the cross between a horse and a donkey can produce a jackass or a jenny, but both are sterile. In other cases, progeny is impossible. In any case, it is forbidden activity. To work differing animals of a different form together is to play God not to be a creaturely man and a researcher of truth within the God-established limits. 
We live in a day when homosexuality and abortion are seen as human rights, as legitimate options for all mankind. Behind this position lies a long development of anti-biblical thought. Much earlier, men began to limit moral concerns to the world of the mind, to spiritual concerns. The material world was seen as value-free, and the realm of the spirit was thus rendered a limited one. In such a perspective, biblical law was hardly relevant. It was too materialistic. Matter was seen as the realm of physical causality alone, and the role of spirit was also neglected and limited. As the quote-unquote spiritual realm in this dualistic scheme of things was gradually eliminated as mythical, law and morality were also eliminated as objective and eternally valid concerns. All things were seen as simply physical, and the physical, in terms of Greek thought, was regarded as amoral and outside the realm of values. In recent years, value has returned to the physical realm in a humanistic sense. The physical realm is a value only in the existential sense. Our bodies and our sexuality, for example, have value only if they are governed by the physical impulses of the moment. To deny those urges is immoral because it means the imposition of an external standard on the sovereign physical realm. In the sexual world, this means no tampering with one's sexual urges. In the natural world, it means re-establishing and maintaining a natural primitivism by removing all the uses and developments of civilization and its technology. The value is nature per se. Nature with man and his culture removed. Where man is concerned, he attains value by abandoning his culture, that is, his religion and its standards. However, because God created all things, the life framework of all things is God's law. This is true of man and of the world around him. Men, however, are unwilling to concede this fact. To illustrate, soon after World War II, when farm incomes rose, some farmers sought to improve their income by planting, for example, tomatoes between the rows of young grapevines, also newly planted. This was abandoned soon as harmful to the vines, although some contested that opinion and conclusion. Not even those who concluded that a young vineyard could not be planted with tomatoes and the like were ready to see it as related to Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 9. Ironically, Maimonides himself saw the validity of these laws as limited to the land of Israel and to Syria, as though God's law did not operate outside of Palestine. On the other hand, Maimonides saw the law of diverse kinds as opposed to the grafting of trees. The greater hardiness and resistance of seedlings to grafted fruit trees is well known. This subject deserves careful study. Maimonides and others apparently held to the requirement that those who grafted, whether in the land of Israel or outside of it, should be flogged. The vulnerability of hybrids to blights is well known. The potential for radical crop destruction, enough to create serious shortages, is well known. In the 1970s, the corn crop in the United States was, for a time, seriously endangered. It should be added that the use of the word hybrid is often misleading, because it includes legitimate plant developments with the production of some sterile varieties. The whole subject is one which deserves careful study, because it is basic to life. Maimonides was ignorant about some elementary facts of life concerning animals and seeds, but he took the law seriously. We now need farming experts who take the law as God-given to study these laws. Paul uses these laws to show their application to the realm of human relations. He makes clear that mixed marriages between believers and unbelievers are forbidden. It is unequal yoking. For Paul, the meaning of mixed marriages is religious. Men have often opposed marriages which bridge class barriers, that is, the nobility and commoners, or upper classes with lower classes. Again, the mixed marriages problem is viewed racially. 
Paul concerns himself with neither. These he leaves to the realm of personal or historical considerations. It is the religiously mixed marriage of believers with unbelievers which is forbidden as an unequal yoking. The unclean thing is a yoking with an unbeliever where it is done by an ostensible believer. Paul's comments in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 deal with the marriages of couples who were originally both unbelievers and subsequently one becomes a Christian. In such cases, the believer is not to break the bond, but if the unbelieving partner departs, the believer is free. Paul's use of the law is not a, quote, spiritualization, end quote. It simply reveals the full scope of the law. God's principle of order is valid for men, plants, animals and the earth, because all are his. He made them, and his word governs them all. God's blessings can only be gained by obedience to the totality of God's law. Unequal yoking is commonplace in our time. We are told that homosexuality and abortion can live at peace with godly families and a Christian community, and that, quote, freedom, end quote, necessitates a toleration of crime. Unequal yoking means the oppression of one by the other because good and evil cannot coexist in any peaceful détente. Warfare is explicit and implicit in the nature of both, and unequal yoking becomes an excuse for enslavement. A final word. Some scientists regard the word kinds as vague and meaningless. The fact is that much more vagueness and uncertainty attaches to the word, quote, species, end quote, Given the biblical principles of order, it can be held that a more exact classification could be made in terms of the biblical premises implicit in the word, quote, kinds, end quote.